Guys, I've got to be honest. This is probably the worst thing I've ever critiqued on this channel. There is no skill curve, no momentum, no crunch. In fact, there is no gameplay at all. Zero out of ten, F minus minus. Still better than Heroes. Okay, I'm sorry. It's just that I've never talked about a movie. This strange, archaic form of non-interactive media here on the Geek Critique. What do I even do with this? All right, I'll stop joshing you. These impressions are what I would call spoiler light. I allude to a lot of things here without saying them outright, but I would still recommend that you see the movie first if you're on the fence. Oh, and I'm going to talk over footage of Sonic Robo Blast 2 because I haven't been able to stop playing it in weeks now, and I want to show off how cool it is. All right, here we go. I don't think I've ever felt so literally of two minds about anything as I do the Sonic movie. Now, I'm not torn about it at all. I just find myself holding two completely different, rather incompatible opinions about this film simultaneously, and yet it's like I can do that without causing any internal conflict. It's a rubber band ball of contradictions that I feel no need to untangle. Perspective, Perspective number, number one. one. As a lifelong diehard Sonic fan, I found the movie to be... A pretty fun time on its own merits, but disappointingly divorced from its litany of source material. This part of my brain walked out of the movie feeling a whole lot like I did coming out of the 2017 Power Rangers movie. What they did, they did really well, but I guess in an attempt to appeal to a wide audience, the movie seemed to omit nearly everything that makes Sonic, his world, his universe, so special and recognizable. To be fair, it's not nearly as bad as Power Rangers in this regard. It doesn't seem to be ashamed of its source material. It just doesn't have much of anything to do with it. This difference is best exemplified by the opening. Man, everything about it, from the way it looked to the way it felt, was just perfect. And if we could have just stayed there in Sonic's world, I wouldn't have this rubber band ball of contradictions. I'd have loved the movie outright. Now, don't get me wrong, there were some really cool visual in-jokes and shout-outs throughout the movie, and that was appreciated. But that's all it was. Visual. As far as the plot goes, aside from the very beginning and the very end, you could replace Sonic with an original character who is also a speedy alien with a heart of gold, give Robotnik a different name, and all you'd really need to do is run find and replace on the script and it would still make sense. That's just how little any pre-established concept of Sonic actually mattered in this movie. This might not have been so apparent if Sonic felt more like, I guess, what my personal notion of Sonic is supposed to feel like. One of the most important aspects, I think, of how I see the character is this. Sonic hides his own anxiety or insecurities, when he has them, with an even bigger than usual abundance of bravado. Whether that's to lift the spirits of the people he cares about, or to shield himself from those insecurities is up in the air, but it's something that's been mostly consistent about the character across various universes. This new Sonic does try to cover his insecurities with humor, and he's as quippy and confident as he should be, but he's also openly and directly vulnerable in a way that doesn't quite feel right to me. Now, this is, of course, a whole new continuity. And honestly, the idea that a cool hero cannot be cool if they're also emotionally vulnerable is a really outdated concept. Sonic may well be more relatable this way, and this particular Sonic, being the way that he is, makes all the sense in the world given his circumstances. Sonic doesn't have to be, and literally could not be, a match for all Sonics that came before. And despite my nitpicks, he got his hooks in me. I really did come to love and relate to the character despite this, and even as a new spin on Sonic, he was largely excellent. It's just that combined with everything else I felt the movie lacked, not even having a Sonic that quite resonated with me was a bigger letdown than it otherwise would have been. But here's the thing. Even as my grown-up, analytical, lifelong Sonic fan brain was lambasting the movie, fulfilling the need to shoehorn Sonic into the real world and making itself into a buddy cop flick instead of doing anything with what Sonic actually is, I still had a huge smile on my face the entire time. Because perspective, perspective number, number two. two. The seven-year-old kid that I used to be who loved Sonic way too much to ever critique any aspect of it and wanted to know and play and see every single thing his hero did is still a part of me. And he had the time of his life. He couldn't have cared less about whether Sad AM or Adventures had anything to do with the games. He loved it all, and he loved this too. I don't quite know why, but watching this movie made me feel that part of my fandom in a way that I really haven't in a long time. The theater I was in was a mix of older couples on Valentine's dates and parents with their kids, and given how much worry there's been over whether Sonic still does or is even supposed to appeal to kids, it was so heartwarming to hear those kids just having the time of their lives. 
exactly like I would have been. So please don't walk away from this thinking that I didn't enjoy the movie. I mean, I was waiting for a literal quarter century to see this thing, and it's still my favorite video game adaptation I've ever seen. It was so cool to finally see Sonic on the big screen, Jim Carrey's Robotnik sold every scene he was in, and the film was genuinely funny, well acted, and even well written. Even if it was a little too generic and a way too heavy-handed with product placement, the heart of Sonic the Hedgehog, the soul of the reason that we love this franchise, was captured in this film, and that shines through. I'm glad to see it's getting Sonic some positive attention, and I'm super happy it's doing as well as it is. And hey, if that critical die-hard grown-up fan wants a film that has more elements of Sonic, that is exactly where a sequel could really shine. And that scene at the end certainly teases as much. Man, I hope we get it. Alright, until next time, you keep geeking, I'll keep critiquing.